factors and uh, um, dynamic stability uh, dynamic stability uh, both in a, in a in vitro experiment so in, a, in an isolated network but progressively more and more uh, in, in networks embedded in the in the virtual animal the other project is uh, uh, honesty or homeostasis and network stability uh, the project uh, had the goal to systematically investigate and simulate stability and plasticity in uh, neural populations and uh, we have done good progress in both of these aspects and in particular we have uh, uh, two projects in uh, uh, in particular we have two uh, main progress in uh, in uh, in this respect so we have uh, uh, we are carrying on a mathematical analysis on uh, uh, the learning law of uh, uh, the previous project and basically we are recasting them in matrix notation analyzing the result the uh, eigenvalues of this resulting matrix to determine what are the conditions on the x and y or the pre and post synaptic uh, cell activation such that if those conditions are uh, observed then the resulting law uh, are uh, are stable if if uh, possible at all and the other the other uh, project we are carrying on uh, pertains to the so called uh, uh, neural soup uh, simulation so just a quick reminder of, oh and there is a, a poster about the last project given by ben uh, at the back of the room so through various conversations with uh, HP and, uh, and uh, DARPA, we define a sort of like um, uh, some of some key properties that a neural soup uh, should have. So what is a neural soup uh, according to according to us? Okay. So a neural soup is a network which uh, start which uh, has initially random uh, connectivity, but can self-organize its connectivity in response to uh, structured input. Uh, also, as the average intensity of the input uh, slowly moves up and down, uh, the network tends to maintain an average uh, activity level. In fi finally, if the input is cut off, uh, activity initially goes down, but the network is able to uh, autonomously restore equilibrium, for instance, by self-organizing into uh, active uh, uh, neural groups. Uh, to these three fundamental properties, we would like to add a fourth property. We want to make our life is a little bit more difficult, and we would like to add a functional constraint. So we want to <coughs> we want the resulting network to, to satisfy uh, that satisfy these three properties, also to learn something meaningful for the organism. For instance, to if if the neural soup is a, uh, is, is a, an artificial visual system, we want this visual system to develop a meaningful um, visual representation or or receptive fields. Uh, this is a COG uh, ex machina implementation of uh, the beginning of this soup. Uh, in this slide, I have the small version of the network just for display purposes, but uh, Ben, as in the back of the room, uh, a running demo um, with uh, the same network recast in a, in a large scale, uh, and, and I think the size is 1 million euros. Uh, I'm not sure you're going to run the demo live, but. Uh, I think that is. So we start with uh, uh, a natural image which is inputted to a 29 by 29 uh, network which is connected to a 10 by 10 layer of uh, recurrent competitive fields um, through uh, a 20 by 20 learnable kernel. Uh, also each uh, unit in the recurrent competitive field is uh, uh, connected through inhibitor recognition to its neighbors. Uh, the key aspect of uh, the network pertains to the two multiplicative homeostasis mechanism. This uh, uh, small h and big h are in terms uh, uh, governed by uh, a few other differential equations that ensures the homeostatic property, which has been modeled to uh, um, it has been modeled after um, uh, some experimental results obtained by Gina Torigiano, who is one of the world leaders in the study of uh, homeostasis in uh, uh, in uh, in vitro and uh, in 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 um, uh, in cortical in cortical neurons, which happens also to be part of our larger center uh, Celeste, so we are lacking this. Uh, these are some uh, uh, experimental results. I, again, I invite you to see the poster for more details. But the thing that I would like to draw your attention in is that, uh, despite the network um, is uh, um, uh, bombarded with a variety of uh, uh, input. Um, that you can notice here, uh, you, can, you can also see that the receptive field uh, of uh, one sample recurrent competitive field starts to develop, uh, you know, selectivity to um, to a particular uh, stimulus stimulus uh, configuration, and this selectivity tends to be maintained throughout the, the simulation, despite here the input varies 
um, uh, in a in a fairly in a fairly dramatic way. So uh, here you have uh, the natural images presented, which are overlapped with the slowly ramping up and the slowly ramping out, uh, ramping down uh, stimulus, and here with a big square wave of activity. And here, the activity is totally cut off. Despite this uh, wide variety in uh, um, changing activity, both the overall activity of the network tends to remain constant, and also uh, the uh, overall uh, configuration of the receptive field uh, tends to remain uh, well behaved. Future plans is to complete a mathematical analysis of the learning laws uh, to uh, determine a robust uh, input range and parameter range. And in phase two, uh, we would like to basically use the insight of this project in the um, in the animat uh, when when the uh, when this is functionally useful. Next project is item or iterative evolution of models. Uh, the goal of item was uh, to create a, a software framework that will help us automatize model exploration, tuning, verification, and reporting. Uh, we have done good progress on this, and actually, you can observe item uh, live uh, implementing the soup simulation. So, again, go uh, to the same poster, uh, uh, go to Ben, and he will show you both the soup and item at the same time. Item consists of uh, uh, these six boxes, which are um, not immediately clear what they do, but they become more clear if you see them in action. So, item in this cur is in its current uh, uh, incarnation uh, detects when new code is checked in the uh, version uh, version control archive, checks out and compiles the, the, uh, this code. In particular, again, this instantiation is uh, pertains to the soup project, runs the soup simulation. Archives the simulation results. Exposes simulation results and data through web applications. And notifies the user that the simulation has been completed. And get stuck. The plan for the end of phase one, uh, we would like to expand the use of uh, item to uh, progressive to all the other projects. We would like to, to add support to um, uh, remote GPU uh, clusters to, uh, to be able to support our simulations. Also, we would like to add that basic data analysis tools, uh, add basic support for grid search and director search to help us uh, look for uh, better parameters. And we would like to finally iterative refine the user interaction model. Um, the final goal of uh, uh, item for phase two is to actually apply it to Moneta and to help uh, 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 to help us find the better um, the best neural architecture that will subserve uh, the animal brain. Finally, Moneta stands for Modular Neural Exploring Traveling Agent, and uh, the goal of this project was to create a, uh, to create an intelligent agent capable of navigate navigating a virtual environment and replicating uh, role and behavior. We have done a good amount of progress in each one of these uh, um, fields. And uh, what we uh, would like to demonstrate here is, uh, is, and the final goal of, these, uh, of uh, the project in phase one is to actually have an animat capable of navigating in the so-called uh, uh, Morris Water Maze. Uh, the Morris Water Maze is a maze, uh, you know, it, it is a fairly simple environment. So it's a circular maze, uh, which is devoid of a particular um, visual complexity, apart from a few landmarks that help the rat to orient itself. So the rat is put in the water. Rats hate water and try to swim to safety as much as they, as soon as they can. And uh, uh, there is a hidden platform in the run where the rat uh, can swim uh, and uh, you know and get out of the water. So progressively through learning, the rat uses the visual cues and the allo its allocentric uh, space representation to um, a, to uh, swim faster and more efficiently to the platform. Uh, the way we are approaching the development of Moneta is through a divide and conquer strategy. So we want to, we take a, a we have a, a whole brain system. We divide it into um, a subsystem. We develop those subsystem uh, independently. Then we reassemble them, and uh, as new subsystem become progressively more refined, more refined, we swap them in. Uh, I would like to invite you to see the poster by Anatoly uh, about Moneta. 
So this is uh, uh, the current uh, system diagram of the animat. There are again a few uh, macro area here that I would like to uh, draw your attention. The pink area is the sensory system. So we have a, a, a large visual system here with a touch. Uh, we also also another sensor is, is touch. We have a, a, a yellow a yellow area here, which is the motivational reward system, and the green area, which is planning and navigation system. The current uh, uh, plan for Moneta includes uh, about eighteen thousand uh, machines and one point seven million weights. The uh, boxes, which are in uh, light gray and green, uh, will be learned, will be uh, plastic by, by the end of phase one. And again, if you're curious to know what each of these boxes correspond to uh, anatomically, uh, please come to the poster. This is an example of one of the modules of Moneta, uh, in particular the it's hippocampal system, and uh, that's a mechanism that uh, functionally helps the animal to find the path in the in the virtual environment, which is and this algorithm is modeled after Anatoly's uh, PhD thesis. So, given the goal location uh, in world coordinates, uh, the system initiates a reverse spread. When the reverse spread hits the current uh, position, a forward spread is initiated, which, uh, when this forward spread collides with the second wave of the reverse spread, that is the uh, next next step uh, uh, in the path uh, of the animals. And this algorithm not only works when uh, you start to include obstacles, it guarantees you to find the shortest path uh, the shortest linear path to the um, to the goal from the current position. Visually Moneta, so we have something which has been uh, completed and some other uh, modules which are still under development by the end of phase one. Uh, the objective of Moneta is to build a system able to do invariant object uh, recognition and localization. And in order to accomplish this, this uh, goal, we have two main uh, uh, areas, a where system, uh, which basically is, into, is uh, devoted to find uh, salient uh, image patches uh, in the input and the what system that basically classifies uh, object in those uh, salient patches. Um, we, we are of course interested not only in uh, uh, simulated, in, uh, in uh, recognizes static images and uh, images in the virtual environment, but one day we would like to apply, uh, one day pretty soon we would like to apply this to uh, more challenging environments. And it turns out that uh, I will actually be teaching a robotic class uh, in the fall 2010, so we have a few robots uh, lying around, around in the lab and we thought, well why not, let's just, just try to port uh, what we have in the individual system in August uh, to the robot and see what happens. Uh, how tough it is in particular. And the, the robotic platform we have is a fairly simple one. So we have an iRobot uh, Create, which is substantially um, a common vacuum cleaner. It's a, a common Roomba uh, uh, without without its vacuum cleaning capabilities. Uh, on top of this, you can uh, install through a serial port, uh, um, a serial cable, uh, a netbook, which basically uh, can can elaborate the input from, uh, uh, from the Roomba and can communicate uh, back to the Roomba uh, with motor command. Uh, but what we wanted to do is to install Cogex Machina and uh, the saliency map, uh, or you know whatever we have from uh, the uh, Moneta Visual System available, in a machine with a GPU. So we used uh, uh, the netbook to basically uh, ship uh, ship the data wirelessly um, to 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 Cogex Machina, co have Cogex Machina uh, run the saliency map, and then uh, send back the motor command uh, to uh, to the robot via the via the netbook and uh, execute the motor command. Uh, the experimental setting was fairly simple, so we have a, 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 you know, a, small, a small environment with uh, one uh, salient object and we want the robot to orient itself, find the most salient uh, object in the image and just move towards it until, uh, until it hits it. And this is a, uh, a little demo of, um, uh, of the, um, a little demo of the robot. So on the left here you have a, uh, you have a video of the robot moving and approaching the salient object. And here on the right you have <coughs> the saliency map. The green cross is uh, uh, it represents the most salient part of the image, which, as you can see, the robot tries to uh, center towards it and chase it until uh, until the front bumper of the robot detects uh, the contact with uh, with the object. Again, this is not uh, you know, the ultimate robotic application, but what was uh, uh, the, our purpose, which was, uh, I think, a success, was to, uh, was to hook up uh, a robotic platform with Cogex Machina, and that has been a, a fairly painless task.